December 16, 1967, was the day Toho released their eighth Godzilla movie, Monster Island's Decisive Battle, Godzilla's Son, or as most of us know it as, Son of Godzilla. The movie introduced us to many new kaiju, including the title monster, Manila, or just Baby Godzilla as he's called in this film. After his debut movie, he would go on to appear in the next two entries of the franchise, with Destroy All Monsters being a sequel to this film, and All Monsters Attack taking place in its own timeline, whereas Manila, his father, and all the other characters are works of fiction. And the story doesn't follow the timeline of that of the movies. Because after all, everything is... All within the mind of a child. Later movies and media would bring back the baby Godzilla for all new adventures, of course taking place in their own respective timelines. But going back to the original trilogy, did you know that Manila might not be the same character from Son of Godzilla to destroy all monsters? In fact, there may even be some evidence to show that the baby may have tragically passed away before destroy all monsters even happened. With that being said, let's dive into the video. Please consider both liking and subscribing, it really helps. 1954 Japan Godzilla had made his appearance known to the world, and with it, he brought along mass destruction to the major city of Tokyo. The creature did meet its end to that of a super weapon created by a brilliant scientist who gave his life to protect the world. The following year, a second Godzilla also awoke, along with him a spiky dinosaur creature named Anguirus. Unlike the Godzilla from the first film, this one doesn't die, he just gets trapped in ice and re-emerges several years later. This Godzilla would go on to appear for the rest of the original series of films, all the way to Terror of Mechagodzilla, the final movie made in the original timeline. Manila arrives on the scene in the 8th entry, hatching from an egg on Solgill Islands, and since has been raised by his adoptive father, Godzilla. And if you're wondering, yes, Manila is the adoptive son of Godzilla, as stated on Toho's English website. I mean, it only makes sense because then there'd be the question on what happened to Mrs. Godzilla. Anyways, Manila, like many newborn creatures, is excited to see the world, meeting some nice people, but also the danger that lurks in the world. Of course, to combat the threats, Godzilla teaches the baby about their species' signature attack, the atomic breath. However, Manila unfortunately can only use smoke rings, which seem to do next to nothing. However, he does seem to adapt to use the breath attack more frequently on his own throughout the course of the film, even aiding his dad against the terrible spider kaiju, Kumanga. As I said earlier, after the adventure that was Son of Godzilla, Destroy All Monsters would be the next film. This movie would bring back many old monsters, including Manila. However, something about him seems a little different from when we last saw him. For one, he's now almost as tall as Godzilla, and he reverts back to using smoke rings, when at the end of the last movie, he was able to use his atomic breath normally. So, what exactly happened? There's a few things we can consider here, as to what transpired between that of Son of Godzilla and Destroy All Monsters. The first one being is that this is the same Manila, who's now just grown bigger over time. But if we take that theory into consideration, then why hasn't he grown to look like Godzilla yet? I say that though because it's not just a year has passed, no, we're talking 32 years here. Because for those who aren't aware, Destroy All Monsters takes place in the year 1999, whereas Son of Godzilla supposedly takes place in 1967, or at least sometime in the late 60s. Even though both films came out a year apart from each other, they're set in two completely different time periods. So how is Manila still like this? We can still say that this is the same Manila, and that this is the fully grown state of the creature. Then, what about the smoke rings? Well, one did strangle Ghidorah to finish him off, so maybe over time he just learned to concentrate his smoke rings into a physical attack. I'm thinking a little too deep into that there, but it could happen. Manila is part of Godzilla's species, but that doesn't mean he's the same genetically. Like how all frogs aren't born the same, or spiders, or any type of creature for that matter. We never really get into what Godzilla looked like when he was a baby, or even before his atomic mutation. Yes, I know some are going to bring up the Heisei era lore, but we're not counting that here. That has no relevance to what's going over here with Manila, since he was not part of that timeline. A second theory I have is that the Manila from Son of Godzilla had passed away before the events of Destroy All Monsters, and that the one we follow in the movies is an all-new creature, given the long time gap and resorting back to smoke rings. If so, then what happened to the first baby Godzilla? Timeline-wise, the creature hasn't been seen since his arrival in his debut film. 
Destroy All Monsters takes place decades later. All Monsters Attack is its own thing and has no spot in the timeline. That leaves us with only the 70s films, none of which feature or even mention Manila, except for one. In the beginning of Godzilla vs. Gigan, we're shown clips of the other kaiju who reside on Monster Island, and of course Manila is shown to be one of them. It's during this moment when we're told that the humans, or more specifically the M Space Hunter Nebula aliens, plan to destroy Monster Island and all the creatures that reside on it. Though the plan was never conducted, the following movie almost sees that through, as nearby nuclear testing unleashes a devastating earthquake on Monster Island. Though we never see the full devastation of this event, we can at least see that Manila is not with his father, even after the outcome. Whether he survived the destruction of his home or not is not really clear. Being the youngest of the kaiju, there's a strong chance that he may have fell victim to Mother Nature. Thus why Godzilla is all alone for the remainder of the series until Destroy All Monsters kicks in. Though we're not taking it into account, Manila did say in All Monsters Attack, Godzilla would like him to fight for himself and to survive on his own. It is a logical explanation that Manila wouldn't always be by his adoptive father's side, as most animals in their infancy tend to stay by their parents' side only for about a year or so, some even less than that. So it is quite possible that Manila was surviving on his own once he came to Monster Island. We never get to see most of the kaiju after the earthquake happened, and many of the creatures do end up appearing in Destroy All Monsters, so it is quite possible that Manila did survive the quake, and is only doing a get-together with his dad at the end of the movie, after many years of not seeing him. After all, even in the beginning of Destroy All Monsters, Manila isn't by Godzilla's side. But again, we come around to those smoke rings he should have long grown out of. A final theory I have is that the Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Hedra and onward is Manila now grown up, and that the Godzilla from Son of Godzilla had passed away shortly after. I say this because Godzilla does look very different in Son of Godzilla. In a way, he has a very elderly-like appearance to him now. Now, in real life, I understand why he looks like this, because the creators wanted him to resemble more of Manila. But that doesn't explain in canon why he looks the way he does. So I'm guessing he probably had passed away shortly after the events of Son of Godzilla, and that Manila grew into a fully adult Godzilla once the 70s came around. And when Destroy All Monsters happened, he found and raised another Manila, like his father did before him. This is one of those popular theories that even Toho themselves acknowledge. And despite that, I do find it to be one of the more unlikelier reasons. Though we can't measure the lifespan on how long a Godzilla can actually live for, we can at least look at modern day reptiles to get something of an idea. After all, Godzilla is a mutated dinosaur and dinosaurs are indeed reptiles. The oldest type of reptiles can actually live for over 100 years, and some, like the Komodo dragon, can live up to about 30 to 60 years. With that in mind, I don't think Godzilla would have passed away after only being around for a little over a decade. I mean, after all, if he was young when we first saw him battling in Garrus in 1955, how come he doesn't look like Manila? I mean, he is supposed to be young here, right? Now, Toho has never come out to say that Destroy All Monsters Manila is a different creature from what we saw before. It's not really something that anyone thinks of when they watch these movies. It's just that when nerds like me piece story elements together like this, you kind of see some things that seem to not make a lot of sense. Now, what do you, the viewer, think? Do you believe any of these theories to be true, or do you have your own ideas to why Manila seems a little different from one movie to the other? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Until next time everyone, take care.